In this tutorial, we are going to look at some of the types of variables that are commonly being used in the MATLAB environment. The variables that we are handling so far was numeric. So for instance, when we say a equals to nine, so type of this variable a is automatically set and it is of numeric type. So let us explore some of the other data types. First of all, we are going to look at the character data type. When we write a equals to hello world and press enter, now the variable a contains non-numeric data and in particular it contains character values. And we can check its type by writing whose and it will show that the class of this variable is of type character. Since by default everything is a matrix so its size is 1 cross 11 which means that it has 11 characters in it. Please note that this that the space is also counted as one character in this case. So if we count, we note that the hello contains five characters, then followed by a space, which makes it six, and then five more characters in the word world, W-O-R-L-D, which makes the total number of characters equals to 11. If we want to increase the size of this matrix and we want to add one more row to this matrix which will make it a 2 cross 11 matrix and the second row will contain a copy of the first row, the colon here means that all columns in this case corresponding to the first row. I want to assign it the values that are stored in, in the first row and all the columns corresponding to that. We will use the colon operator very frequently in this course and we'll come back to it so don't worry about this right now. In this case we means that the second row of A will be exactly the same as that of the first row of the matrix A. Again we should note that the restriction that the character array is that all the rows should have equal number of columns. So let's say if we want the third row to have some values which is not 11 characters long, for example we may say hi how are you? So it will give us an error and it's because it is not of the same size as date of the earlier rows. That is it does not contain the same number of columns as the previous rows. And because of that, it returns an error message. If we make it exactly the same size as the previous rows, that is 11 characters long, then it will not give us that particular error message. If we want to store characters of various sizes, so for that purpose, we need to create strings. The string data type is actually initialized using the reserved word of string. By reserve word we mean that it cannot be used as a variable name in your programs and scripts because the MATLAB is going to use it for a specific purpose. Let's say A equals to string and let us define the first element of the string by mentioning a suitable string. Let's say, hi, how are you? Now the MATLAB is indicating to us that A is of type string and its contents are these. If we want to store multiple elements into this string variable, then we can enclose it in square brackets. It means we are giving it multiple values and they are going to be part of the same variable of type string. We can store variable lengths of string in each element of the string variable. The second element is hello world in this particular case. It now contains a 1 cross 2 string array. When we look at it by writing whose, it is of size 1 cross 2 and each of the element is of different size. So similarly, if we want to insert another row into it, we can insert something else in the second row and we can say my name into it. But remember that since it is a matrix, so you need to insert two more strings here so that the number of columns are the same. And of course, they can be of variable lengths. So now it will be 2 cross 2 string. 
and this is the first value this is the second value the third value and fourth value so an important topic that we missed was that how we can access the individual elements of the matrix for that we need to use these smooth brackets the first argument here specifies the row and the second argument specifies the columns so 1 comma 1 will correspond to this particular element that is the first row first column this is the second element which has an index of 1 and 1 comma 2 which mean the first row and second column and then this is the second row first column so 2 comma 1 and finally 2 comma 2 which means second row second column so when we press enter it will return the first value and then if you want to access the second value you need to say 1 comma 2 so in journal the first argument here will correspond to the rows and the second argument will correspond to the column similarly if we have a matrix and if you want to access the, this element so it is located in the second row and in the second column so we need to specify it by 2 comma 2 and it will return the respective element to us similarly for this one it is 1 comma 3 so that's how you can access the individual elements within a particular matrix you can always do some operations on certain element of a matrix for instance we want to set the value of 1 comma 3 to 9 plus 1 now only the element 1 comma 3 is going to be updated to a new value this means that we have performed an operation on a particular element of the matrix. Finally, we look at another interesting data type which is called logical data type. This data type can be used to select some data elements from a particular matrix or store the results of some logical decision and operation that you carried out in your program. So in order to find to define a logical variable, you need to write logical and then you can define the values that you want to have in the logical variable i want to define it as a two cross four variable the logical variable is going to only contain either one or a zero value so again when we define a variable of type logical then it can hold only two values either one or zero if you by mistake mention some greater value value greater than 1 it will be converted to 1 automatically so now instead of a value 8 we have 1 over here corresponding to that element value we will explore more about the logical variables in the upcoming segments for now you just need to know that this is a data type and it can contain only two values either 1 or 0 and they are used in order to select some data or make some useful decisions within your program okay that was it for this particular segment we have looked at some common data types used in MATLAB see you in the upcoming tutorials and until then enjoy MATLAB programming